The 1983 New York City Marathon was the race which I felt was going to define what my career was about. I had trained the best I'd ever trained. As I, I left my training grounds, I went to New York knowing that I was prepared to live with the consequence of my performance. The race started out as any other race did. When you're on the start line, you've got to reflect very quickly in a thousandth of a second, a reflection on what you have done to get here. And I had every right to expect the best performance of my life. I trained like I'd never done before. Within five miles, I was starting to settle in comfortably. At 10 miles, I started to feel, hmm, I've got another, 20, another 16 miles of this. So you go through a bit of a roller coaster of emotions, of, of, of feelings, of sometimes confidence, of sometimes a little doubt. At this stage, the leaders are starting to get away from me. I knew I had my times splits on my fingers. I knew that as I made each five mile mark, that I was right on my predicted time. I was running to my plan. The most important thing with the marathon, with any race, is to run your plan, not somebody else's. You've got to be a winner at your race and on your plan. By 15, 15 mile, I was starting to settle into a good rhythm, but the leaders were well ahead of me. At 20 miles, I knew the final 10K was the most important 10K, still two and a half minutes behind the leaders. But knowing that I was right on track to run the time of my life, I then got to 23 mile and did the math and realized I was actually going to run out of real estate trying to catch him. What I had to do, I couldn't run any faster. I had to believe that he would slow down. He would give me time. I knew that he was running in the center of the road. I had to run the tangents. And it wasn't a matter that I was gonna run faster. It was meaning that I was not having to run the distance. And each corner that I saved one or two yards timed by 40 corners, I suddenly had the 80 or 90 metres that I was short in time. He's, he's got determination on his face. He's going for it. We may see the greatest finish in the history of marathoning. Here comes Dixon. As we got up to Columbus Circle and close to the 26 mile, I was now the hunter. He was the hunted. He was looking back. I was focused on him. Here comes Dixon. He's very, very close. They're even. They're basically even now, and Dixon's going to the arms, which he's been concerned At 26 miles, I went past him. I ran as fast as I could past him so that it would devastate him, and he wouldn't want to try and catch me. In the final minute of the race, Smith's trying to come back, but the pain, it appears... The last 385 yards, I was running scared. I looked back a couple of times. I knew that the finish line was just up the road, the race wasn't won until I crossed that finish line. I came around the corner, I saw the finish line, I ran and I ran and I won. There it is, Rod Dixon has won the New York City Marathon. Look at him on his knees, his eyes to the heavens. It's... What a great win. I've beaten Jeff Smith, the great English runner, by eight seconds, at approximately 30 yards. It was the 10th fastest time in history, the second fastest ever run on New York and uh, the margin of uh, victory was eight seconds. Jeff Smith was a, went on to win a uh, Boston Marathon twice after that, a former Olympian, a great runner from Great Britain, and a great competitor, and without Jeff, that race wouldn't have been possible.